Sega. Oh god, it's been a while, hasn't it? Select your files. I don't even know if I'm gonna upload this or not, but... I don't know. We'll see how it is when I get in the groove, as it were. Oh, I forgot how loud this is. Anyway, hello! Welcome Select to Sonic Adventure! So, Sonic Adventure is a game that... I remember back in the day, like, everyone pretty much liked universally. Now it's like a little more divisive. I mean, it was always like a little somewhat divisive back in the day, but I feel like now with the rise of like opinions on the internet or whatever, it's a lot easier to notice. But that doesn't really matter that much to me. I still like the game a lot and I still want to play it for the internet. So, let's jump on in. Let's get him. I 
of the weirder things about Sonic Adventure is that it starts with a boss fight. I don't know, is there a single other Sonic game that does that? I don't know of any. But, that being said, the boss is piss easy. Like, for the first two phases, all you have to do is, like, hit him on the head. Which, he gives you, like, so many openings to do. And for a third phase, now that's the tricky part. Before you hit him on the head hey, this I'll time, you have to mash the spin time. button repeatedly. And it's over in 22 seconds. Nice. Come on, you big drip! Where you going? Know nothing, fool! It's Chaos, the god of destruction! <laughs> huh? What? Tails? Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Tails? Ah, what am I gonna do with you? God, I love the goofy-ass facial expressions in this game, and also the people just kind of spontaneously appearing out of nowhere. They're significantly less detailed than Sonic is. It's a weird ass swimsuit, by the way. Oh well. But yeah, um, I wish they carried those facial expressions over into DX. If it's not clear by now, I'm playing this on PC with mods to make it look like the Dreamcast version. Because, in my opinion, it looks better. Like, technically, it's, like, lower poly than thus less impressive and immersive, but fuck that. This has more artistic, like, I just enjoy this more from an artistic angle. The use of color is better, the character models have more charm, has better lighting, all that jazz. In my opinion, this is just a better looking version of the game. And this isn't just nostalgia talking, because I played the GameCube version first. And, uh, funny story about that, uh, that I will explain later. Yeah, here's Emerald Coast, the first level of the game. Oop, hello. Yeah, levels in Sonic Adventure are littered with secrets. For the most part, some of them, like, aren't, but... Emerald Coast, for one, is really fun to just explore around in. And I, I'm just realizing. Huh. I should probably turn the draw distance up, because I thought it was higher than it was. Probably should have caught that since I had a failed recording before this. But, uh, well. And yeah, just had to show that off, because it's cool. I'm not actually going to play through the whole game like that, because, you know, I want to show off the game as it is. But I gotta show off stuff like that, because that's one of my favorite things about this game. Just the freedom you have to, like, use the game's physics as you see fit. Like, I don't want to sound like some back-in-my-day, like, annoying old dude, but... Like, I don't know. You don't see that a lot in games these days, and even a lot of games back in the day... Like, I have to commend Sonic Adventure for letting you do that, even if the physics are broken in a lot of ways. I just love getting the air off of, like, spinning and dashing off a slope. That's neat. Alright. 
Here we go. A lot of sections of the game are automated, and I know a lot of people don't really like that. For me, it's like... I don't know. It's fine. There were a lot of automated parts in the Genesis games, too, so... Whatever, really. Such as this, which was not in the Genesis games, but still. It's a cool little set piece, so... I'm fine with it being there. So... Those stuff around here, so I'm boost more. Not too much, but hey. So, there's also actually two ways of getting off this cliff, one of which is intentional. I'm gonna be doing both just because I think this way is cool as hell, but I want to actually show off the other way. Especially since there's an extra life down it anyway. Alright, so. And that over there is the main reason I want to show this off. You want to get as many extra lives as you can, because the camera in this game isn't great. This is like early 3D, nobody knew camera controls at the time, but... Even then, this game still has pretty poor camera, even for its time. Again, I like this game, but I'm not going to pretend it doesn't have flaws. Like, I'm not blind to that. I just think the good outweighs the negatives for me. Alright, uh... See, I could go for all that, but there's, like, nothing over there of any interest, so... I'm just gonna do this. Skip over a whole dang thing. Hell yeah. I decide to do a stupid and like jump off of the into the water. But hey, there we go. That's the end of the level. Yeah, not bad. That level C completed thing isn't like a ranking, by the way. I'll explain what that actually means later. Like hey, probably buddy. way later. Long time no see, huh? I'm just glad you're okay. What happened anyway? You're too good of a pilot to just crash like that. That was a test run using a new prototype propulsion system. It's got a few bugs to iron out. Why not just use my plane, the Tornado? Thanks, but you gotta check out my newest power supply. Ta-da! Whoa! A Chaos Emerald! Yep, I just happened to find one of the Southern Emeralds during one of my test flights. This thing's got unlimited power, you know. So I figured, why not use it to power my plane? Supercharged! You gotta come over to my workshop, Sonic. I've got something I've gotta show you. It's in the Mystic Ruins. The fastest way is by train. Let's go! And with that, we've unlocked Tails. So, if you weren't aware, in case you're like one of the three people on this planet who hasn't played Sonic Adventure, uh, pretty much the central gimmick of this game, beyond being like the first real 3D Sonic game, is that you have several different characters to play as. Each of them have their own campaign, albeit most of them are actually really short. Sonic is the only one that has any real length, and even then, I suspect I'll probably be I'll probably be done with Sonic's campaign in like seven videos. I don't know. The others are like four, five levels at most each. And those, I imagine, <laughs> will be done in like two, maybe three at most. But we'll see how things play out. As for now, there's only like one more thing I want to do before we end off. And that is... Get on over here. There we go. Go 
got it. There's several of these emblems scattered around the adventure fields. You also find them by clearing major objectives like what we did earlier, if you didn't catch that. But hey. Uh, those, I don't think they have a function at all in the Dreamcast version, but in the, uh, in the DX version and onward, so basically the DX version, they unlock Game Gear games right up until the uh, Xbox Live and PlayStation 3 release, which omitted the mini games for reasons that I am not entirely sure of. Not that you're really missing much. Most of the GameCube Sonic games kind of suck. Game Gear Sonic games, excuse me, kinda suck. I don't know. But, without it said, let's set on a train for Mystic Roots, and next time, we'll be heading there. See y'all then.